Hello again, Chris Lee and Chase Robinson of Southeastern 16 here to preview Oklahoma's road trip to Missouri. That is at 645 Central on the SEC Network. Missouri about a two and a half point favorite with an over under of 42 and a half, making for an implied final score of Missouri 23, Oklahoma 20. My composite computer model has got Missouri favored by about two. Oklahoma got a big win over Maine last week for whatever it's worth. Missouri followed up a bad loss at Alabama. I'm bad in the sense that it was shut out. And now I'm not sure Missouri has really got a realistic shot at the playoff, but technically I think still in it. So things to play for for both teams in this one. Oklahoma looking for bowl eligibility. Chase, let's get right into it. Let's start when Oklahoma has got the football. I'm going to give you the numbers for the season. Sooners averaging 25.3 points, averages 70 snaps, 4.8 yards on both rushing and passing plays, 2.2% turnover rate, a 12.4% sack rate. That's awful. We know about their offensive line difficulties. As for Missouri, defense have been pretty good, although against a weak schedule. Only on the field, an average of 57 snaps a game, 4.7 on rushing plays, 5.9 on passing plays, 1.8% turnover rate, 8.7% sack rate. Did Oklahoma find something last week with Javante Barnes going over 200 yards, Jackson Arnold having a better game? I mean, it was Maine, but this is also a team that struggled to move the ball against anybody and everybody. Yeah, and, and maybe they did. Uh, maybe they found something offensively to go to. I mean, um, they've made a change in offensive coordinator, so they're in a position a little in limbo on that side of the ball as far as leadership goes. But, uh, you know, they're they're bound to find something, I feel like, because there's talent there. Uh, we know that. And, and yeah, they've struggled with injury along the offensive line and uh, struggled to get things going at quarterback, like uh, especially at running back, too. They haven't been able to run the ball well so far, and, and they've played half the season with, uh, with ride receivers out left and right. And so there's, there's been, they've had their fair share of issues. It's been hard to come back from, I feel like, in a lot of different ways for this uh, Oklahoma team. But, you know, I feel like they're due to find something offensively and get rolling. Will it be this week? We'll see. But um, I feel like they have the pieces in place where they could, where they could score points. It's just maybe finding the right recipe and, and guys on the field at the same time to do that. Well, I mean, maybe. They had both offensive tackles out last week. I don't know if they get those guys back this week or not. We've talked about how they've had their top five receivers hurt. You know, you get a Deion Burks or somebody like that back. And we're doing this on Tuesday, so watch your injury report there. I'm doing a quick update and not finding a lot of substance. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the flip side of that, Chase, is because of all those injuries, it's gotten other people experienced. J.J. Hester yeah. had four catches for a buck twelve last week, so that's something to be mindful of too. Yeah, for sure. And and these guys are getting reps. Uh, that'll help for the future. And you know, this is. I, I don't think we could just put a uh, you know say Oklahoma's done. No, I mean, wouldn't surprise me if they're playing in a bowl game. Uh, you know, they've got Missouri, Alabama, and LSU left, which is tough. But maybe they can pull out a win in, in one or a couple of those. Um, but I don't think we can count. We could just ride Oklahoma off uh, in this game because I, I think they, they can compete with Missouri. Yeah, Missouri's defense has been kind of interesting, been pretty good for most of the season, did allow 512 yards to Texas A&M, 486 to Alabama. Now, that facing an offense anywhere near this universe. Um, you know, 286 yards allowed to Auburn. That's probably a lot more what this is going to look like than, than it was the other two games. But it's a solid defense. It's one that has benefited from playing a weak schedule, but it's one that's also got a good bit of talent. Yeah, they do. And, uh, you know, they those two games are the, the, the Texas A&M and Alabama that they gave up all that yardage or the, the two games they've lost the worst in. Uh, and, and, and they gave up a lot and, and really couldn't stop anybody. And so... Um, you know, I think there there is talent on this defense. They, we've seen that. They've shown that. Um, it's just kind of putting it all together. And I think this will be a very interesting part of the matchup is this this uh, this defense of Missouri, this offense of Oklahoma, when not a lot has gone great for it as of late. 
Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting from the earliest odds to in game live betting. Bet Online provides you with all the action and the ability to watch games as they happen. With the world's largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA, NHL to entertainment and political props, I would include college basketball in that too. That's started now. Head to Bet Online today to get in on all the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. Okay, the other side of the matchup, pretty interesting because Oklahoma's defense, very, very good. Let me give you the numbers here, starting with the Sooners. 21 points allowed per game on an average of 61 snaps, 4.6 on rushing play, just 5.1 on passing plays. That's excellent. Sack rate of almost 10%, turnover rate of 2.7%. Missouri's offense, I'm going to give you the numbers, but I don't know that these are really going to be relevant. 27.8 points per game on 72 snaps, which is a lot. Now, that could be key if you keep your offense on the field. They turn it over just 1.2% of the time, 5.2 on rushing plays, 6 flat on passing plays, sack rate of 6%. Chase, I think the big thing here is, is Brady Cook going to play? I don't think he is. Drew yeah, Pine is not has not been yeah. good. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, all indication is that at Brady Cook probably won't play. Uh, now, Eli Drinkwitz did say last week that he expects him to absolutely, is the word he used in quotation marks, uh, return some point this season. I I don't think it'll be this week. Um, and yeah, Drew Pine has just not has has just not been able to get anything going. I mean, his numbers aren't great. He can't run the ball. Um, he hasn't been able to to find his receivers like he should. And so this offense, this whole team, I feel like just looks completely different um, when he's on the field. And, uh, you know, that's nothing against him. It's just Brady Cook has has been able to do some really good things for this team. And and we saw what Brady Cook was able to do when he went and got his MRI at the hospital, came back and, and beat Auburn. You know, he, he's a game-changer type quarterback. But when he was not healthy against Alabama – struggled through that game. Missouri struggled in that game. And I feel like if the if the offense is not clicking and the de- the defense doesn't play well also. And so uh yeah. it, this kind of this whole team kind of revolves around what Brady Cook's doing. And if he's not in, uh, I think it could uh it, it could be rough for, for Missouri. Yeah, they're gonna have to get the ball to Luther Burden. Maybe that's end arounds, short throws, something. I I don't know why he's not gotten more touches than he's had this year. I, I think They've got two good running backs, really three, if you want to be honest. You've seen Nate Noel have big games. I think this is a big day for him if Missouri's going to win. Marcus Carroll also will, of course, have a role. I think that's something to watch. I think so, too. Yeah, I mean, they've got to. They've there's There's got to be guys who step up and take control. We didn't see that against uh you know against um Alabama a couple of weeks ago. We didn't see anybody really take charge when Brady Cook went out. They've got to be able to do that. They've, they've got to have guys they can lean on, whether it is a Luther Burden or Marcus Carroll, those, those guys who we know are good. They just Somebody's got to take charge for Missouri, especially against this defense they're facing in Oklahoma, which I really like. Yeah, and on the Oklahoma side, a lot of those turnovers came early. You got Billy Bowman who can take it the distance. You got Danny Stutzman, all those playmakers back there. So been a really good defense that's been put in a bad spot all year. Let's get the yeah. picks and why. I'll start with you. You know, because I don't think Brady Cook is going to play and because I think the offense cannot generate anything if he's not in there, I'm going to take Oklahoma in this game. I think it's set up. Again, they're coming off a win. They've got a little more confidence coming into this game. I feel like uh, Oklahoma goes in there, gets a win. And uh, again, I think it could be a close game. But without Brady Cook, I think this is a different Missouri team. I'm going to roll with the Sooners. Yeah, I'm the same way for the same reasons. It's just weird to me that Burden's not getting the ball more. The the drop-off from Cook, who wasn't having the Brady Cook season last year, this year, I, I don't know. Just something just feels a little off to me the way that they played against good teams. Give me the Sooners in an upset to get to bowl eligibility. We'll wrap it up Friday night. Excuse me, Saturday night. Hit the subscribe button, enable your notifications so you can watch. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. You've been watching Southeastern 16 presented by Bet Online.